and welcome. I'm John, and this is Unique All Gamers Terrain. Guys, welcome back. For all those of you new, this is a you, you found a little treasure trove here. This is a, an amazing channel. I make terrain builds, painted videos, let's build videos, weekly Q and A. For everyone that's a regular here, guys, I feel love. Thank you very much. See you second, guys. Right, so what am I making this week? Well, I did have some plan to make, but there was um, one of them, one of you guys, one of my viewers, said uh, they wanted to see my fancy army. So I'm planning to bring that out for next Wednesday, but I need space on the table. I don't want to be making the build and everything said whether I spend time sorting it out and blah blah blah. So I've gone on to the next build that I'm going to do, um, which is a really a follow on from what I'm doing here, but. What I would want to do is a freestanding piece of terrain. But I want to do it in a way that you can use it on its own, just to play on on its own, like a gaming board. But you can also add it to other terrain. And you know, look, it doesn't look out of place, it looks fantastic. Yeah. And I was making this bad boy, I actually came across two squares of polystyrene, and they're thicker, or they're not as thick as the boards. So that's where we're going to start. Okay, I'll see you then, guys. Right, so these are the two set pieces. So I believe they are. They are like 15 mils, 15 millimeter thick. Whereas them ones are 22 or 23, something like that. So that's 15 as well. Now, I don't think they're the correct size for a kill team or anything like that. It's 13 inches by 13 inches. So, where these came from, I think there was a box of something. It's on the ledger box, I think. I had one at the bottom, one at the top. I can't remember what it was, but that's, that's where they came from. So, I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking is, it's just go into town on them to make make it uh, you know two two tiles that can be used really easily in games of necromander or kill team absolutely fantastic even though they may not be the correct size board they could be used for that or they could be used either in the table or used together and then you have uh, other bits coming off so the only bits of terrain you know bits of terrain but the only bits of you think that people models can move through is the terrain, yeah, like rooms and corridors and stuff like that. But I want to make it so it's multi story, so it's, it's gonna look amazing, it always does. But I want to make it so it's freestanding, so I can actually put it onto the game board if I want to. So I could add them down and put that on top as a, a freestanding piece of terrain, or they can be by themselves. So that's the basis from the start. Um, I've got loads of bits of polystyrene here and everywhere. Big bits over here, big bits over there. And look, see what I've got interesting shapes and stuff, and start making a plan. Back to you soon, guys. Right, I seem to have jumped ahead a little bit. I just um, done something, and then I reread the footage that I'd already filmed and realized I hadn't even shown you what the setup was going to be, which is not a big issue. So I've got this material. This is that. Uh, lovely material that goes into the fridge or the cupboard a little bit bunged up today it stops being sliding across the place I had an off cut piece so I cut into strips and I then cut into squares now I didn't measure anything I just cut it by eye I tried to get it as straight as possible but it's, it's difficult to do it when you've got circles looking at you now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue these onto here okay to give me a nice um, base. I don't know if I've got enough here. I've got two tiles to do, but one of them is uh, I've got the ideal layout, ideal layout for it already, but the other one I'm, I'm not too sure on yet. So I'm going to hot glue them on and I'll come back to you then, guys. Sorry, I, I did, I put the base the material down on the polystyrene and then I just went into my little world and started carrying on. I thought, oh no, I need to I need to show you this. So here we are so far. The only mistake I've made, 
I should have painted the polystyrene black first of all, so you won't see none of the white coming through, but that's not a big issue. That's where we're at so far, okay? Now this is, this clear bit is, that's where it was originally, okay? It was uh, shortcake biscuits. They come in a big box and that was, that's the packaging they came in. Two rolls as you know, yeah? Um, this is a bigger two roll bit. I'm gonna use that for soup piping and sewerage. So, I just got a little bit, a little bit carried away there. <laughs> Now the aim for here is to stick another second one on here so I've got the height. So I can, the necromander terrain that I've already made can be leveled up to the same height. You know, I know there's that much gap at the bottom, but it's not going to matter if it's a little drop or a little higher, it's a matter. Especially not a necromander. Um, this nice, this nice, this nice little walkway through, cut off the ends. I had to actually do a test piece, that's how it started. I cut a piece of this one, yeah, uh, put some hot glue on it to see if it could melt it or if it would, because I was thinking, I was expecting to use PVA glue to, to put it together and it did melt it, so I was like, great, okay, and I just started working away and just. <laughs> so I'm gonna carry on. I did have originally a piece of polystyrene up this side to make like a wall. But I'm, I'm not sure. I might still have a piece of polystyrene there, but make it so it's the height of two of these. Yeah, these two roll bits. So it all lines up nicely. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just finish off putting the last bits on here, and then I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like then. I still have to get a brush and black paint going around in between the tiles, which I should have done, which I'll do on the, first, the second piece. Just get that the paint over first of all. Go see in a second. Right, <laughs> so here we are, okay, I'm so carried away, now these are the same height, obviously the, the polystone bit here is a little bit smaller but it's not a big issue like the said the Necromander, I can actually put a piece of board across the top here, now I do have a piece that comes out and covers these two and this one at the back here so there's, you know, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to put something on there permanently but then I don't want it open all the time. It's I'm gonna still decide what I'm gonna do there. Um so I'm gonna give it a spray down now, give it undercoat black, and then just decide what I'm gonna do afterwards. Because I've I've just uh, got a piece of polystyrene. I've got a black rattle can. There's a new uh, spray that I'm using. It cost me two euros. I just tested it out with a bit of polystyrene. And it didn't melt it. So I'm gonna just apply it straight to this and if it works that's going to be my new terrain spray so and if it does it works fine i'll get that you guys know about it and where to get it from let's do the same guys right the first piece i test sprayed on fine didn't melt i was like oh, okay great i found something amazing here i started doing this one and on the whole i've just missed a bit there i see that on the whole it's okay but as you can see that it's starting to just bubble away a little bit here and there. Yeah, it's not it's not that bad, it's not as bad as it usually is. It's just um I just didn't want it to be. I would have preferred it just to go on there, but you know, hey. Looks like I'm still gonna have to go over a brush. <laughs> but I can just uh leave it to dry now and then check the damage afterwards. See the same guys. Right, so I showed you the first piece. I'll give you a little snapshot of it in a minute. But I sort of messed up with the, the spray. It sort of started melting away. But on the test piece, it didn't. I'd, it's probably a different gradient in the polystyrene, I would say. So I had to end up giving it under spray over the top just to neutralize the, the spray effect. But still give a black undercoat. There are certain parts of it I might have to go over, touch up with a brush here and there. It's not a big issue. But that's looking good. But then I thought I got the second piece I was going to work on, and I was going to reveal the second piece at the end. So reveal the second piece at the end once I've done the first piece. You'll see the first piece being worked on, and then the two pieces put together. So I'm still bunged up here, guys. Um, so then I was hammering and hammering because I didn't want to have to 
I look at the whole thing black and then have to wait and then I'll soak it to dry and so I don't mess around like that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm well behind on this product anyway, but I came up with the idea and it's the same way I should have done the first one in the first place. I cut a piece of pizza box and hot glued it to the board. So the only thing left to do is a little bit of trim around the edge, which I've done, apart from the bit obviously I'm holding, and just paint this bit black. Because then this white board here can be sprayed with the metal can. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm going to do that, and then that should be an hour or two that's dry. I can start gluing other bits onto it, fill and mix it, and everything else I need to do. Even though on this build, I'm trying to move away. I'm not moving away from fill and mix. I just want to try and limit the amount of filler I have to put on this piece. So that's because I'm behind, but also because I just don't want to use the filler on it today. I want to try to just do this piece without filler and try and get the same the same stone effect as well. So guys, I'm going to crack back on a bit. I'll see you in a minute. Right, you see the pretty pictures. Now, say so this piece here, okay, is one piece. Well, it's not. It's still wet underneath. It's bizarre. I didn't know it's still wet underneath. Okay. Well, it's not one piece. I say, the top piece comes off. Okay. So that's one. It just needs a dry brush with some silver and a few other little colours here. The piece of polystyrene I've got on this side of it, I'm not going to give it the painless grey and then go with the, the cream and skull dry brush over the top to bring it up a stone. I want it to look like really like chalky, dirty stone. Like they've just got together a bit of moisture, put it together to make a something. Um, with that said, where I use the spray on this is the first piece. I showed you the second piece was a bit different, but the first piece, there's a few little bits where I'm not going to be able to get a brush, but it has damaged it, but I need to just try and tidy up as much as I can. Now the second piece, the second piece is absolutely amazing. In my opinion, you know, I'm not just saying because I made it in my opinion, that's the best piece of necromantic terrain I've ever done. Ever. There's two bits on it that I could have done a little bit differently. Because what, what happened is I was looking around here for bits and pieces and I come across loads of the plastic pieces of Necromander terrain from the first Necromander game. Now, for those who don't know these pieces, they slot into each other. They slot into each other at the top and there's a little nip at the top that you can actually put a piece of cardboard into. Now, the two mistakes on that piece that I've done they're very simple, very small things. It's not really, you know, no, they're noticeable or not really that important. But the, the plastic piece of terrain has the little nips on top to put the cardboard into. I didn't snip them off. I should have done. But only looking at it now, I thought, oh, I should have done that. And one of the one of the pieces where I put the, to make a platform, I didn't think about it until after I'd done it. There's a little tiny gap between that piece. And it's not a big issue because it could just be, where they've just slapped it in there, the wall's worn away or, or whatever it is, but all this needs now is a dry brush. You don't need to see me dry brushing. If you're not sure what a dry brush is, chuck them below and I'll show you on you know, I'll show you how to how, how to dry brush and dry brushing is about. Dry brush the other piece, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them up. I'm gonna do a grand reveal, and I'm gonna set them up so you can see them. I ideally want to have a model. On each one facing each other okay and take a picture and then move the piece of terrain with the model still facing the same way it was in the first place in the same position and just show you how many different combinations you can do obviously i'm not going to show every combination because this is a lot and then show you some prick pictures with some models on there and other bits of terrain that i've done on the channel for necromander tied in together now i do apologize i don't have necromander gains I only have 4K models. That's something I hope to expire in a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two. Get a couple of Necromander, Necromander gangs in, let's build a video, paint video, and then I've got them for the pretty pictures. 
I'm still a bit bugged up guys so I do apologize if I come across a bit snuffly so I'm going to dry brush these and give you some pretty pictures so guys you know if you've enjoyed this video hit the buttons for me I'll probably say it again at the end but see you in a second guys you ready the grand reveal so this is the one I showed you if it zooms in okay obviously the top half comes off I fit a Necron, a Cryptic, a Scorpec Lord on, Destroy Lord, whatever it is on there. And the Space Marine Terminator on that side. Here is the other side. Absolutely amazing. Now this side, so these are all the plastic bits from Necron Metal Game. Um, undercoated black, and I gave it a dry brush of Moonlord Brass. You're picking that up at all on the camera. I think I missed that one actually. I know you can pick it up there. So let's get a bit of shot actually. There we are two really nice pieces that can be arranged like this. Yeah. So all I've done is move it from here. And turn it around to that side. I'm going to do the same again. The same again. I can even turn this piece. Turn it around, turn it around. Keep turning it around. Or I can take the lid off. If it stops. Let me go zoom a bit further actually. Zoom in a bit. There we go. Yeah, so you can even take the lid off and have it like that. Yeah, the light's going to mess up on me now. Don't mess up on me. Have a little bit. See that. Now I've just put the the roof back on. Put Mister Man down here. I've added the walkway. Yeah. To this bad boy. <laughs> yeah, this is a, from a little while ago. A few, a few. Uh, I think it was actually last terrain build. Well, it was a couple of weeks ago that one was. Okay, I could even add bits like this into there. The old Gothic ruins can come in here. Yeah. So I get a, a nice, let me, sorry, I'm zooming back in again, haven't I? A nice big shot of it. Yeah. Now, even though this piece and this piece are slightly different heights, the walkway works perfect because I've overshot the walkway from the card. Um, you can even have it so it's these two pieces joining, which I'll show you now. There we go. Absolutely. I'm so happy with this piece. Absolutely blown away by it. Just this, I mean, this, this half of it, fantastic idea. Brilliant, fantastic. I love it. But this, when I found these guys, and I was like, oh, hold on a second. Just actually just changes the game totally. You can even have it something like this. So there's one bridgeway separating the two pieces. You can even have, make another walkway to go the other side and have the same sort of thing. Also, it zooms in. Come on. You can also flip the walkway, and it's like a... Um, an air duct, but you just walk across the top of it. And that's just absolutely insane. So have a good, good closer look at this guy. I can get the light in right. The light seems to let me down over the last couple of videos. Then this guy can come off. Can go here. Then you've just got all this space as well. Yeah, you have one gang here. One gang on the other side, and away you go. Objective could be in the middle here somewhere. You can have kill team here, kill team over there, and then again something in the middle. And yeah, it's just absolutely amazing piece. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Turn your notifications. This is a joy to make. Um, it took longer than expected because there was other stuff going on. Uh, 
yeah, if you want to know how I made the walkways, so comment below and I'll, I'll do a video on that. It's very straightforward, very, very simple. I've got another few little scatter pieces coming up from Necromunda. That's, again, going to be very simple to make. Very, very simple. I just apologise I haven't got any Necromunda models on there. Or I've only only got two to two models on there because I didn't. I'm running out of time. I don't want to get everything out there. Put everything back. And... <sighs> same old, same old. But colours. I forgot to mention colours. I actually used Chainmail Silver, which is an old uh, paint to dry brush the silver, only because there's a tiny smidgen left in there. I wanted to get rid of it. Um, Rune Lord Brass was for the Necromunda train, plastic train pieces. I then used some Corax White for the bit of polystyrene that was forms the wall over here. There's a bit damaged here and there from the spray, and I made a few damage marks in it myself. So I gave it a quick dry brush of that. Then I got a bit of, a bit more of it, watered down a little bit, and just went around, around the, the holes that I made. So it just really stood out. And then I used some Agrax Earthshade, just to wash it down here and there, to make it a bit grimy. So guys, again, hit the buttons for me. I really like this. So until next time, guys, take it easy. I'll see you later.